My name is Yeti Tawalda. I'm a second year graduate student in planetary science in the EAPS department at MIT, and I work with Maria Zuber on mapping the ghost craters of Mars. I think it's a combination of visits to the planetarium as a child and a love of science fiction novels, which I still read a lot of today. Uh, those together, just I saw, always heard of new space or space exploration would sort of be my future. When I was in high school, I thought that I would want to either go into science or engineering, and I had this uh, great program that um, called MITES, which is the Minorities Introduction to Technology, Engineering, and Science, which is here at MIT. And for a summer, they brought us out here and sort of gave us uh, an idea of what coming to school would be like here. And I really uh, fell in love with the engineering class there, and that's why I decided to come here as an undergrad for Aero Astro Engineering. And then I decided that I wanted to switch phases and go back more into science for graduate studies, and I came to Eeps for that. I, I had a year off with Lindy Elkinston, and she was just great and introduced me to the program. And I remembered how much I loved science, and I wanted to be here. The first research project I'm working on with Maria Zuber is focused on the ghost craters of Mars. So basically, the northern lowlands of Mars are about four to five kilometers lower than the southern highlands, and they make up about a third of the surface. And uh, they're thought to be formed by a giant impact. Now, uh, within that impact crater, there are all these ghost craters, which is basically uh, craters that have been filled in. They've been plugged in with some sort of fill. Uh, I'm trying to map those and figure out what the fill composition is and the volume is. And the idea is that once you figure out what that is, you could remove it. And assuming that the surface is uh, flexually compensated, uh, you can see what it used to look like in the past. So basic idea, let's say the surface first looked like this. If it's going to have some sort of load on it, then uh, it might bend down and sink to support that load. If we figure out what that load is, we can remove it and restore it to what it used to look like. And we can learn all sorts of things about uh, potentially ancient shorelines and the evolution of Mars and all sorts of cool things. So. My second project is with Taylor Perone, and we're looking at Titan, which is the sixth moon of Saturn. And it's a very exciting moon because in our solar system, other than Earth, it's the only place we know of that has a dense nitrogen atmosphere. And also, other than Earth, it's the only place that holds uh, liquid on its surface. But unlike Earth, it's not liquid water, it's liquid methane. And it, instead of cutting through rock like it does here, it cuts through water ice. So it's interesting that you have uh, sort of this these similar dynamics, but it's such a different environment. And it's cool to kind of see where things are similar and where are different. And we do see uh, fluvial networks there. And basically, I'm trying to figure out as much as I can about those networks um, in terms of matching, uh, in terms of measuring drainage areas and other information we can get from uh, the limited data we have. And just to sort of compare it, see where it differs from Earth, and learn as much as we can about Titan's surface. So for Mars, uh, I've been very spoiled with the data. We have uh, the Mars Orbiter Laser, uh, the Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter, or MOLA, and it's actually provided some outstanding uh, just information data on the topography of Mars. I think at one point we actually knew more about the surface of Mars than we do about the surface of Earth, and it's just uh, it's just been great to work with that as opposed to. Uh, Titan, which we have data from the Cassini mission, but it's uh, it's such limited data, and because it's so far out, and it's such hard to get data from that. So our our understanding of Titan is uh, not as great as it is of Mars. <laughs> I guess my greatest tool, of course, is my advisors. <laughs> uh, whenever I have a question or something I need answered or a, an approach that I need to work off of, they're they're always available, and it's uh, it's great to bounce ideas off of them. Uh, for my data so far, it's mostly been um, information that's from different NASA missions that uh, have that have public like have public access to everyone. So that's where I get the majority of my tools from. Uh, I'm still in the mapping phase probably for both of these places. So once I uh, the Mars one, that's that one's going to be big. But I I still need to add the gravity data, which I haven't gotten yet. So that one uh, I'm not going to be able to tell for a little bit. Uh, I'm still in the beginning phases of Titan as well. <laughs> I think research is a lot different from undergraduate studies in terms of you have to be self-motivated. And uh, I'm more used to just kind of hard deadlines 
and just uh, get things done. But now it's it's really up to you, and you have to have the drive and the passion to go forth and really uh, make sure you're doing as much as you can for your projects. And I'm hoping to uh, for the Mars to really kind of uh, get a better idea and understanding of the the of the evolution of Mars. I think that'd be very exciting. Uh, Titan as well. Titan has a lot of potential. Uh, peop Titan has a lot of potential, potentially even subsurface life or uh, things like that, and that always is very interesting, pretty much everyone in planetary science, <laughs> including myself, and that's what drew me to Titan in the first place, is just things we don't see anywhere else. We're seeing, on, other than Earth, we're seeing on Titan, and uh, hopefully one day we, we'd have uh, enough resources to really know for sure whether there's that possibility on that planet, on that moon. Uh, Maria Zuber is the reason I came here. She, she's just so amazing at doing exactly the sort of things that I want to do in the future, combining both engineering and science to really further our knowledge base for, for our solar system, our universe, and uh, I'm lucky to work with her. <laughs>